still off the lows of the day. We're making some progress, trying to hold it in here with 40 minutes left. Joining us to continue the AI chat and the tech investing themes, Mr. Ross Gerber, President and CEO at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Ross, NVIDIA still our hero, going to live up to hero's duties this afternoon? <laughs> well, it's a lot to live up to, don't you think? Um, so I, I think they, they're going to have great numbers by any metric for any large company. It's just the expectations are insanely high. So what the stock's going to do, I can't tell you. You know, we, we don't like to trade around earnings because it could go either direction. You think generally still buying a hold and uh, early to mid innings of NVIDIA's secular trend here? Yeah, you know, so for us, it's a little different because we've owned NVIDIA for a decade and we have huge gains on our position. So we've we've tried to keep things within, you know, a 10 percent allocation being max for our firm. So we have trimmed a little bit of NVIDIA, but it has nothing to do with our belief in the company. Um, that said, it's our number one position. Um, it's I think right now 8 percent of my ETF GK. Um, and, and our top position. So I couldn't be more bullish on the company, but I just caution everybody to be long-term investors, to be prudent about your positioning and your sizing. And there's many other opportunities in AI that are cheaper than NVIDIA as well. So, so we love the company. Does the Supermicro stuff uh, concern uh, you at all? If they're a big customer of NVIDIA's, what if any of those numbers over there aren't right? I read through the report. We own a very small position in Supermicro, which we exited um, today. You know, for the most part, not in, not completely, but we started to exit because I do have a tremendous amount of respect for the people at Hindenburg and and some of the other firms. And and I went through the report, and some of the information was quite troubling. And it actually had nothing to do with the numbers. It was more to do with uh, sanctions and other issues that they might have some, you know, liability for. My opinion is it's hard to tell what's real and not, but if any of it is true, it's troubling. And so we've moved on. We prefer Dell. Okay. Uh, which is uh, telling us that uh, right now there is uh, still some pretty good uh, momentum, right? Uh, even though Dell's come off pretty hard and some of these trades have, I guess the idea is this could be sort of a valuation reset. Does it seem like that, Ross, given the backdrop, too, of lower rates coming? Does that give us some more flexibility for what valuations these stocks might uh, receive? Well, you have two camps. You know, you've got like the NVIDIA and the Broadcom and the ASML camp where things are trading at, you know, let's say between 30 and 40 times forward earnings. And then you've got stocks like Dell, which are trading at like 10 or 12 times forward earnings because they're typically not fast growing companies. But with the AI upgrade servers and then eventually, you know, uh, desktops and other stuff being upgraded, Dell is in a great position with a ridiculously low valuation. So, so I think that's that's sort of the lower you know cost or risk play from a valuation perspective. But but I don't think any of these valuations are wrong. You know I think the higher valued stocks like Nvidia, ASML, uh, you know AMD, they they deserve these higher valuations and they're going to see massive growth in their business. So the AI trade is early and I think investors have to be well diversified here. So part of what we've tried to do is really balance our AI trade with areas like real estate, which we're really bullish on moving into the lower rate environment. And so, you know, I think investors and our clients are best served by having really two sides of their portfolio, the tech side and the non-tech side, and really making sure you're not too heavy just in tech. Okay. As far as uh, uh, timing for the NVIDIA supply chain and its pipeline of products, do you feel that uh, we should generally have confidence that there will be buyers regardless when those chips like Blackwell arrive? Or is there a window of opportunity here while the economy is pumping? It's sort of a macro question weaved in there, I guess. Yeah, and I think with lower rates, obviously, you have a lot more opportunity for people to invest in infrastructure and a lot of infrastructure, especially data centers involved, real estate and, and debt. You know, so when you think about the incredibly high cost and burden of debt on investors for the last several years, having that come down has an enormous positive impact, not only on cash flows into investments, but also just on the actual economics of running your business. So, so certainly if you're making big investments into data centers and stuff, lower rates definitely helps you, along with the fact that I think NVIDIA's product 
you know, expansion. You know, I never tend to worry too much like, oh, a month here, a month there. You know, they continue to develop incredible products well ahead of their competitors. And, and as I said, I think if you look at the data centers that exist today and what they do for their customers, and then what the potential is for what this data can do for their customers, we're doing this internally at my firm and having just an enormous debate about what technology to employ moving forward, knowing that AI is coming, but it's not here yet. What, you know, do we want to invest in older technologies that are established or wait another year and see kind of what are newer technologies in finance that will really maybe move the needle with AI? And so I think a lot of investment is going to come in here, but it's a five to 10 year cycle we're looking at. And so investors just have to be patient, but this is a lovely opportunity. All right. I know one of those uh, AI efforts from a product standpoint uh, you're interested in are the robo taxis at Tesla, right. but you're not interested in much else. From what I understand, you've continued to dump your shares, as you've been telling us for some time, and uh, you reached a milestone of what half your original investment. Is that close? It's 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 about that. You know, part. You know, we lost some money on Tesla over the last three years, so there's some losses in value. You know, from what our position was in 2021, which was massive at that time, as it grew a thousand percent for us and our clients over the five years previous. So, you know, from 21 to today, Tesla's down 50 percent and and a huge underperformer to the markets and everything else. And so part of our positioning is lowering our overall position and, and declines, to be honest. But our issue is this. We had a bunch of people testing Waymo like last week in Santa Monica, which is operating now full robo taxi service here. And everybody loves it. They're doing a great job. Waymo is robo taxi. Uber is still the leader in transportation and getting you know millennials from A to B. And we expect between Uber and now Waymo, enormous competition for robo taxi. So pivoting into this business from selling great cars is is going to be a really difficult lift for Tesla. Understood. Okay. Uh, thanks for the check-in. Appreciate the thoughts. Good luck this afternoon, Ross Gerber. All right.